Good morning, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV for our Monday review. Unfortunately, myself and Boz are going to be talking about another defeat. And then after that, we are going to have a look through the current squad, who's out of contract, etc., who we'd sell, keep, release, etc., and then potential new signings for the next season ahead. Um, but let's crack straight on. Obviously, we know Saturday we lost, unfortunately, again, 3-2 in the last minute. Um, saw a tweet after the game that said if we didn't concede in the 90th minute or after, we'd be 12th this season. Nice and comfortable. I think that would I think be. I tweeted after if we'd have held on against Peterborough and on Saturday we'd have pretty much been safe. And MK Dons is another one. That's all in the last just, month. Yeah, just in the so last month. Three yeah. more points, safe as ours is. Um, football league paper from yesterday. There is your headline. Juve Rossler saying we need call cool heads now. I don't know if he's talking about them or us. Um, we definitely need them. Um, a little bit I'm going to touch on his star man, Rory Donnelly. Thoughts? Yeah, he, he was all right. Um, he wasn't a star man, not for me. He's got in team in a week as a centre midfielder as well. Alongside three... Alongside three wingers. Three wingers and a centre forward have made up the Football League Papers team of the week. Plus two strikers up top as well. So, kind of been a very good day for defensive players. Um, reiterate what Boz said. I, I thought he was all right. I thought he was decent enough. It's a decent enough hit for the free kick. That's I'm glad he's got a goal because he's, but, um, it's been a long time. Yeah, de oh, yeah definitely. Yeah, I don't think he got much credit for that. He, everyone's quick to jump on his back when he's poor, but... Yeah, okay. and we said I think half time in the match day live he was winning plenty in the air he's yeah, putting himself he about like um, but I'm not sure whether he was good enough to get in the team of the week anyway um, today's edition of the Medway Messenger the fight goes on but Jules should be safe by now says AD well yeah we should AD and, I mean that's, that's obvious because we keep chucking away points in the last minute um and again, it comes back to, to what we say every week and what he says every week. He, he goes on about the same thing and they'll have a chat today and they'll be chomping at the bit by Wednesday, Thursday and Just buzzing and worked on everything area. in training. And, and then the same old, same old happens at the weekend. So sort it out, AD. I'm not being funny. If you're the manager. I don't know what else to say about it. I'm not going to get angry because it's, it's no point anymore. He, he knew what he was getting himself into. You know, the butt stuck so, to him. Yeah. And um, Jules were right to talk about playoff ambitions at the bottom. Apparently, he's now admitted that when he came in, he was actually just there to keep us up. But he had so to he come out and say, had to come out and say that it was uh, the playoff uh, was the aim. So more lies. Not saying anymore. Can't be bothered. Inside late winner is a familiar tale. Again, same old, same old. Um, just a lot of pictures. Last paragraph, should Vale get an unlikely win at Walsall on Tuesday, then Edinburgh will be rubbing his hands at the prospect of having the ultimate revenge following his sacking by the Jules in January. Relegation still seems unlikely, but few would be surprised if it happened. If Pennock is chosen to continue next season, then he will have a major task on his hands. Getting the fans on side may be his biggest. I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. I cannot see him getting on, getting the fans on side. It's just been... Four wins. Is it 20 games now? It's 20%. 20% it's, it's, win ratio oh, that's just over three really months bad. is absolutely shocking. So it's over 20 games. So it's eight in 40 if you're going over a full season. So the last six, you might pick up one more. So that's nine wins. That's 27 points. So Jill's going to draw 23 other games to get to 50 each season. Probably concede a lot of 90th minute wins. We all know the it? answer. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um... Lee Martin cut out the silly errors. Apparently he spoke quite well, I was told yesterday. I did a little bit with the um, the last Waltz boys. I did their podcast with Reese and, and Josh and he touched on, apparently AD was asked about this 20% win ratio in his interview that was on Jill's player, which I'm not paying for. Um, apparently he smirked and went, yeah, it's a disaster or something along them lines, basically trying to make a joke of it. Um, again, I won't get angry. Sums us up at the moment, doesn't it? There's so. no point wasting your breath anymore. Um, there's a whole page on, obviously, award winners from Saturday. Lee Big Martin, uh, Josh Wright, Darren Oldacre, Bradley Dack, Cody McDonald and Peter Lloyd. Um, I'm not sure what to say about a couple of them, to be honest. Lee Martin, you can understand he's given it to him because he's worked hard. But he looks a little bit embarrassed. When, when they read his name out, they were warming up. And they were calling he didn't want to go over, did he? He was, more worried about he was just trying to warm up, which was, which was good to see in a way. But... Um, we said at the time it's like winning clubman when you're a kid and it? so basically yeah, you turn it's up like, every week going, thanks for playing you, yeah, you don't play but you pay your subs on time every Sunday or whatever um, there's a bit about Bradley Dax additional band we've done all that um, Lee Martin cut out the silly errors 
Uh, once we got the first, we could have put the game to bed. He said we got a bit tired and they changed their formation with two sitting in midfield. We have to see our games. Two teams do it against us. They sit in for the last 10. But we sit in and they break. All of a sudden, they are down the other end and scoring. It's poor, but we have to go again. Oh, we go again. Not a lot else to report. So in terms Lee of... Lee Martin, for the record, is very good. Probably his best game for us. Superb, I thought, yeah. And apparently in his favourite position, apparently he made a comment in the interview yeah. that he said it was great to be playing in the position that he's comfortable with rather than being shunted out to the left wing back. Panic take note. But he won't. Um, anyway, that's probably it. I'm not going to go into too much detail. We saw it in the match day live. Everyone else saw it. It was at the ground. It weren't the best. Um, we actually thought at 2-1 that we'd done it, not done enough, but it was it was great to see that after being pegged back once that we had enough about us to go and take the lead again. But we were sadly, never going to do it a third time. Same errors. And then we actually conceded it to compound it even more. And I look back at the highlights. I think the bloke who clears the ball from deep in their territory actually is the one that runs the full length of the pitch after that and side foots it home. Um, do we pick him up? Of course we don't. Anyway, on to um, players to be retained, released and potential signings. The the boss man has been doing a little bit of research and he gave us a list this morning of every player in the squad um, when their contract expires. So we've both compiled our own lists of who would we sell, keep, um, if they're obviously under contract. If they're out of contract, would you try and re-sign them or would you just let them go? In terms of who we've got, we're, we're not too far away. Are we? I think we've both done the yeah. same. The only one we've sort of disagreed on is I was keeping Zesh Raymond and letting Ryan Jackson go and you've gone the oh, other way other round. Way. Um, but in terms of that, I'll just run through it. We've gone sell Stuart Nelson. <clears throat> just out of decency. If he wants to play, he, wants to, he deserves he to go and play, play somewhere else. Yeah. He's, he's earned it. Um, Thomas Holy keep, Tom Hadler keep, Mitchell Dickinson, we're getting rid of. We just think that he's been in and around the first team squad for so long. He's, but he's at an age now where he needs to make it. If he's going to make it, he needs to make it now. Um, some might not agree. Max Aimer, I would keep. We've both gone keep. I think if we can get him a regular partner and a proper system, then, then the I think he'd be better open. and just give it to someone who wants the captain. So he's S. Raymond, I've said I'd keep. Boz has said no. Right. Um, I think his experience might be vital in the dressing room. I'm not saying he's got to be first choice. Um, Chris Erd. I've got taxi. Mini bus, but he's going. Uh, Ryan Jackson, I've said go. You want to keep I'm him based on keep just on the fact going forward, he's very good defensively. He's not, so he needs some help. Um, but then again, that comes back to what we're going to talk on in a little bit. But we've only got one in that position, so then you become comfortable well, we in the coast because you know you're going to play. Now. But ironically, he's now centre half apparently. But that's for another day. Uh, Bradley St Garmston, we would both keep. Hopefully, yeah. we can get him fit. Scott Wagstaff, Billy Knott, Aaron Morris, Lee Martin, Josh Wright, Mark Byrne, and Jake Hess and Tyler. We've agreed on we would keep. Yeah. Um, Ollie Muldoon can go. Yeah. It served no purpose, unfortunately. I was I didn't think it was a bad bad signing when he arrived, but he no, served no but purpose. We were at probably all. the ones biggest ones saying he should be signed after watching him in the friendly. Yeah, and he was all right, but he's been an absolute waste of time. To be fair, um, Manuel lost Davy. I've said can go. I think for someone who's only played a handful of games in the football league, I think he's, 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 his head's gone. He's, I lot, think he thinks he's better than he is. There's, there's a lot of players you can tell, you can say they do that well, they do, they do that well. All I can say about us today is he runs a lot. Which I said to you the other week, Which, I said Usain uh, Bolt runs a lot, but you wouldn't play him centre yeah, midfield, would you? So it's, you know, like, He's not going to play 50-yard balls, he's not going to win many tackles. I don't know what else to say about him. I just think he's got ideas above his station, unfortunately. We've all had, we all, again, I've touched on it and I'm copying and pasting again. I know I had that, that little sort of set to with him on Twitter last autumn or whenever it was, but it's just too much on social media. He's poncing about on Instagram and this and that. You've played, what, 30 league games? Sort it out. Um, anyway, for me, he can be someone else's problem. Darren Alday could definitely keep. Yeah. I think he's got a big part to play. Um, Elliot List, I would say, go, and so has Boz. Well, Seems a bit similar harsh. Similar to Mitchell Dickinson. He's, I think he's going to be 21 at the start of the season, and he's going to have played 15 games, maybe. As I said to you, is he one of these that he's playing because he's one of us? Would he get into any other League One team? Probably not. Is he first so, choice? No. No, he's so got sadly... Waxed off. It's, no, thanks. Bradley Daxell, let him move on. He doesn't want to be a simple as for me. If you've got anything you want to expand on that. No, I, I, I see some outrageous valuations of him on Twitter the other night. People thinking we're going to get a million plus. Yeah, you, you're in I think it's a million tops at the moment. I don't think it has. I'd take three quarters. Last year of his contract and he's had a poor season. So. Half a million of add-ons, I'm saying. Shame. Josh Parker, I'd keep. Yeah, I've gone keep. I think he's done all right since he's been here. Um, and I think it was Nick Jules Debate tweeted a picture the other day and said, ironically now, 
the one that was least celebrated at the time yeah, could yeah, turn yeah. out to be our most important goal of the season, the last minute equaliser against um, Port Vale back in January. Um, Rory Donnelly, for me, sadly, he's got to go. He's, we just touched on it, he's only scored two goals. Whether that's his fault or not, I'm not going to get into that, but he scored 12 goals in two seasons. So, I think it's time not to last season, you know, he scored in patches this season. We right. can't really afford it. No, we can't afford to have that again. Um, Hopefully he'll go somewhere else and he'll get games and maybe he'll score goals and, and good luck to him. So I've got nothing personal against no, Rory Donnelly. He works good hard luck enough. To him. Yeah, he works his um, well. Cody McDonald, keep, 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 keep all day long. We need people like Cody McDonald at the club. I know we're selling Stuart Nelson, but that's more out of respect for him. But we need that's players we like Cody. Nelson's going to be first choice, whereas I still think Cody will be first. Got a massive job to do. And if we can get in a target man, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, last one, Greg Cundall, similarly to Elliot Lee <coughs> and Mitchell Dickinson. Dickinson. Time to go, unfortunately. We've got Nolan Bow, I think, is an out-and-out striker. I'm not even sure Greg Cundall's an out-and-out striker. No, I think he's a number 10. I think he went on loan to someone. Yeah. Was he at Bishop Stortford? Yeah. We discussed this when he came on. I said, I don't think he's a... He's not a number nine, but I don't really know where he plays. And again, he's been here for three years and it's he's still no nearer no, to starting near to games in the first now. team. So... So that's our list. And then in terms of those that were on loan, we've both agreed that Deji Ozalaja, who is out of contract at Cardiff, we would try and get him. I think he was very impressive when he first arrived last season when he played alongside, oh, it was John Egan. But I think in a similar vein to, to Max Amar, if we can get regular partners and a proper system and stick to it, I think yeah. they're both still very good at this level. Um, this season, they've not been good enough. We know that. But who has? You can only probably pick two or three that have come out of this well, season. I think really realistically, clear. we're going to be looking at three transfers in the summer and we could do a lot worse. Yeah, I think we could. We, we, we know what he's about. We know He knows the club. He likes the club. Yeah. So... Uh, and then Joe Quigley, Harry Court, we both said just leave him at Bournemouth or let him go somewhere else. Cause... I've got a feeling we're gonna we might get Quigley back on loan, but that's not one that I would go with. I just think that's what'll happen. And let's get players that are ours. We've had this for yeah, years, especially yeah, with the way this loan window loan works. Loan you know, yeah. it's, it's horrible. You end up signing people. Which these is why two, I think we've added the five youngsters this and season. Bailey Cargill that you sign them and they can't play for two months because you have to get them in in a certain time frame. But that's our list of current players, and now we're going to have a look at what we need. Right, so if we were in charge, myself and Mr Walder, and we've released all those that we've spoken about, we're left with a squad of about 15, we think, yeah. at the moment. A lot uh, of midfielders. We look, <laughs> we look like Justin Edwards. <laughs> we've got we were very not very a lot of centre-backs <laughs> and about a million centre-mids, not many and strikers. strikers. Um, so I think we've both got about 15, haven't we? That, that are left so the, the players that we're saying who should be there for the pre-season Thomas Holy, Thomas Hadler Max Amos Zesh Raymond Stroke Ryan Jackson because we couldn't decide um, Bradley Garmston we've agreed that we try and get Deji back in um, and then in midfield Scott Wagstaff Billy Knott Aaron Morris Lee Martin Josh Wright Mark Byrne Jake Hestall and Darren Oldacre um, it's up front, in centre mid. there's loads in there yeah. um, up front obviously Cody McDonald Josh Parker um, You've then got the, the youngsters that signed pro deals plus Henry uh, Henry Newcomb. So that's another six that you'd use that could be in and around the squad but potentially could go on loan to, to local. I, I think sorts. of them five. I think you're looking at obviously Mbo, which needs to feature in pre season. I think Mbo would be the be one. Involved. And Steve, Bradley Stevenson, we, maybe. We've watched him in pre season. We quite so, liked him last year. But um, again, yeah, you'd think Mbo out of, I, out I of think them six. The, um, Finn O'Mara will probably become Mitchell Dickinson. He'll be in the odd squad. And potentially Aaron Simpson as well. Yeah, I think they'll be, you know, check a trade games maybe. Yeah. They'll, they'll be squad players. I, think we, I don't think we've got a massive squad. So. so in terms of signings, we had it down as, well, I'd got it down as two right backs, two centre backs, a <coughs> left back, two wingers and two strikers. Pretty much the same, yeah. Yeah. So we've had a look on various websites at players that are out of contract. We'll Guarantee we'll not sign one. any of them. We've only looked at League One players. Um, Right, so right, well, goalkeepers we're fine. We're saying we don't need yeah, a goalkeeper. So right backs, I've said we need two because I got rid of Jackson. You obviously said we still need one anyway. So yeah. Paul Caddis, out of contract, experienced, twenty nine years old. Yep, um, I think he mutually had his contract terminated at Birmingham back in the winter, didn't yeah, he? So I he could go and play somewhere injured, else. But he has been playing at. I think it's Berry, wasn't it? We said it looked like it. Yeah, which was you said you thought Blackburn, but it's, the badge was Berry. So unless that's wrong, um, Scott Wiseman. I think Scunthorpe, 31 years old, good experience. Um, and I, and I had, we both said Conor McLaughlin as well, we thought it was very impressive Yeah, I've also Saturday. got Nathan Thompson, who is Swindon. He stands a right back slash centre half. I'm sure we played him before. Yeah, I've got him listed right as a centre half as well, yeah. so um, that could be a good one well, in terms of versatility. Down, I think he's, he's 25 now, I think so. Yep. 
I know there's a rivalry, but if he's good enough, probably if he helps us, he helps us. So, um, so that's 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 our potential targets in terms of right fullback, and obviously Nathan Thompson. I've got him down as a centre half potential signing, left back. Because I've said we need, I've got two targets. Because obviously we've got Garmston and Aaron Simpson, but I still think we need one in. Because you can't rely on Garmston fitness at the moment. Simpson's not ready. So I said James Meredith. I've seen him a couple of times. I think he's, I think he's got bundles of pace defensively. He's, he's decent enough at this level. Um, and another one in terms of experience, I think would be a good target. And I'm not sure we play regularly. And if they go back into the championship, Dean Moxie from Bolton. He's out of contract. Thirty one could be good experience. Um, I know we went down the Paul Koncheski route last year, but. He sadly come across as, as past it, unfortunately, at 34, 35. Whereas Dean Moxie at 31, you'd still think he's, he's got a good couple of years in him. So there's a couple of options for me. Who did you have, mate? Uh, I only went with a one because we've got Garms, and I've gone with um, John Meads from Wimbledon. Local. I think, I think he's played quite often, yeah. He's local, so that would be attracted to him. Whereas apparently I've tried to sign <coughs> half of the North. Of yeah, England. you've gone very northern. <laughs> but you see, if they, if they want to play games, they, they, they probably want to move. So that's, that's what we've got to look at. Um, Centre back. Obviously, we need a couple there. Yeah, well, one we forgot originally that you mentioned just before we came on, Bonds and Gala. We both forgot him. Because he's seemingly been invited back for pre-season, so that might be one that we look at. Um, but in terms of other targets... We've said, we've said Thompson. Nathan Thompson, we've touched on. I think it's a good one. Versatility, good age as well. Uh, he's played games at this level. Um, I've gone Anton Ferdinand. But whether he, saw, he might sign a new deal at Southend, and it's all, but it's all just conjecture and a bit of fun at the moment. Um, but I think at 32, he's still got plenty to offer, and he offers experience, and he's he's had um, plenty of games at the highest level. Um, so for me, I think that would be a good signing. Who have you got in? I've gone with uh, Shane Dunkley from Oxford. Huge, absolute huge. huge of like, yeah. So we need one, don't we? I think he's got a few goals as well, and Oxford have been pretty solid this season. So and we haven't. <laughs> So yeah, so there's there's four or five names there that, that we could look at. Obviously, even if you just get one, it'd be who is it that last year that picked half our signings? Was it Henry, Henry Collier, Collier that tweeted right? it? And apparently, we signed three of them. So if we end up like that, then I'll be more than happy. Um, midfield, I think we need a winger each side because we've released. Um, we struggled with wingers, and we couldn't find a lot. Yeah, of there's wingers. not loads about. I've got two names. I've got Paul <coughs> Anderson. Um, these are right-handed side, left-sided. I couldn't find much to be honest, but right-sided. I've got Paul Anderson at Northampton and George Frankham. I think we've agreed on from Wimbledon yeah, I've again. Yeah, got George Frankham down. Both. They're not miles away in terms of geography. Are they? Northampton's only a couple of hours away, and Wimbledon's pretty local. Um, I think they both offer something um, decent age again. I think Paul Anderson's what late twenties. Yeah, I think Frankham's mid twenties. I so, think he's good with his set pieces as well. So um, left, like I say, left midfield. There's there's not a lot about we can find any. I've got Martin Walford. He, uh, I think he's at Fleetwood now. Um, he has yeah. been a Millwall in the past and somewhere else quite local. I can't remember exactly where. But yeah, I think he's 31, so it's experience. Yeah, we need some in, don't we? I think this has just been our massive problem this season. Well, even going back to the, the back end of last season, there was no one really there that Loft was in and out of the side when he injured and suspended. And Adam Elad come in and he'd done well for a while, but then he picked up an injury. Um, so yeah, we need some experience. Right, and final bits, strikers. Because we've kept Cody and, and uh, Josh Parker. So for me, they're the little ones that want to run in behind. Bow. Nolan and Bow, we think hopefully will be pushing. Um, but I still think we need two in. And for me, yeah. they both need to be targeting men. So. Um, you want to do yours first? Uh, Dave Mooney is uh, available from Southend. He's scored a fair few this season. He's surprised a lot of people. Um, the other one is one we've agreed and we've seen him twice this season we've both been really impressed it's Big Tom, Tom. Big Tom he's br- I think he's brilliant at this level he's for Very me good at what he similar does. to like when we had Adebayo Akin Fenwa he won't score you 25-30 goals a season I mean you but don't get many at this level he's a handful. but he'll probably set up 12 goals for, for, for Cody McDonald or someone like that running in behind just from his flick-ons I mean we watched him home and away this year and he absolutely bossed our centre half didn't he so Tom Elliott's won definitely um I've got a couple of other down in terms of target um, target men. I've got Gary Medina who's another one of bossed us in both games this season. I don't think he'll play much if Bolton go up. So he might be one worth looking at. Calvin Andrew doesn't score loads. He's only got seven this season, but he'll put himself about. And we need people that are nasty, a bit sort of in your face and, and make sure that centre-halves don't want to play. Um, another one was an interesting one. Not really a target man, but we... we Came a lot was Tom Hopper, but I don't know whether we'd have to pay for him due to age. So actually, I don't think he was. He's come up from the use. I think he's come up since from Leicester or something. So, um, but he's out of contract. Yeah, definitely be an, be an option. option. So, so that's that's how far we've got. Anyways, this obviously 
it's all conjecture and a bit of fun, really. But there's, there's plenty of names out there, I think, is what we're trying to say, that, that, that could be available. Um, but yeah, that's a wrap from us this morning. Thank you for listening. Please keep subscribing, liking, telling everyone about us. Um, and until next time, up the jewels.